<laughs> well, I'm not good at changing chords on piano yet because, as has been mentioned every time that I've tried to touch a keyboard on the internet, I don't know what I'm doing. All right. I know the shape of the major chord. I know the shape of the power chord. I know the shape of the minor chord. I can even find a seventh diminished. But I what can't about the shape change. of you? What about the shape of water, bitch? Let's fucking get this rig rolling. Yeah. They're Hello, everybody, and welcome back affected. to the Rabbit Hole Podcast. Definitely still prefer my heavy music, but a good luck. Just get that hook in there. You can find this podcast everywhere podcasts are sold. But for free. I'm Zach. Can you get this in, like, an apple barn? Yep. That's Jeff. If you can buy podcasts there, you can get it there. The worst type of apple and, is a uh, Macintosh. We're back to writing. Badoosh. Skadoosh. Get it. Macintosh is both an apple and an and, uh, apple product. Pretty much everything apple. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, but lots of, there's, there's the Macintosh apple and then there's the, the Macintosh by apple. Are they not the same thing? No, one's an apple and then the other one's a, an apple product. Like a computer? What kind of pretentious motherfucker names one draft of a script the, the, the title? Uh, because I have many drafts of many things. What do you mean? Well, you just sent me <laughs> I a PDF know what that, it is. that's called cooties. What the hell is yours called? Page? Script? So I guess with this podcast, um, I will read my part. You will read your part. We can read along. How many pages is your part? Uh, like 10, I think. Oh, God. Nine, eight and a half. Mine's six, and I thought that was long. Or I guess mine's seven. So this script that we've been writing for like 30 years now, mm. um, I jumped into this, rewrote what I had last time and expanded on it, uh, added some more characters, um, actually added a couple running... Uh, things that could come up in other sections, which actually made me think of, like, American Gods actually kind of put me in this state of mind. Because you know how they have, like, the main, like, the main issue is, like, the war and all that stuff. But then you also have the side plot of, like, Laura, and then the side plot of that dude killing those children in that one town. Yeah. I got a lot of little weird runners going on in this <laughs> that that could, like, amount to some cool extra shit by the end of it uh, so i've had a lot of things where i was like looking at writing a story and i also wanted we actually had one that's come up in and other things i wanted to write where uh the script that we had to abandon at the beginning of this project we were talking about having a serial killer running out the town but not like paying attention to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> just be something that kept coming up and you just <laughs> somebody died because that could be another killer. thing in this script even <laughs> Serial with what killer I'm kid. going with, there's there's just such weird weird stuff. All right, so let I'm I'm gonna start. If you want. All right. Okay. Exterior schoolyard day. There are many children at play. All of them seem to have their own cliques and roles, as if in a society. There are cops and robbers and garbage men and teachers and superheroes and many other types. But our story is about a doctor. We see our protagonist, Dr. Greg, at a small lemonade stand. The sign on the front reads, Doctor, no HMO. All right. That's the no homo joke. Uh, you, thanks for telling us. Do what? Thanks for telling us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, because, like, I, I wanted to, I feel like no PPO would have made more sense, uh, just with, like, kind of that's how more doctors roll. I, I actually did research on that shit. But I was like, no HMO just seems funnier to me. Because people could question, homo. does that mean what I think it means? They're children. Deal with it. He is currently with a patient, a boy named Kyle. Greg is holding a black Sharpie ready to give the shot. Greg, nothing to worry about unless you've been sharing snacks with girls or something. Kyle glances down and away from Greg's eyes. Greg, a little exasperated. Really? What were you thinking? Kyle says, 
I wasn't thinking. Raina was nice to me, and I thought I could, I thought I should reciprocate. You silly son of a bitch. You should have been in here ages ago. This is a preventative measure, not a cure. Greg pulls up his medical mask. You didn't touch her, did you? She didn't touch you? No, I mean, of course not. I've always been really cautious about sicknesses. Who likes being sick? Greg lowers his mask and dramatically leans toward Kyle. Greg, world-weary, says, Everyone, everyone likes being sick. Then you get to stay home, drink 7-Up. Your mom makes you soup, and you can watch Nickelodeon all day. Kyle, skeptical, says, You can't be that cynical. I can, and I am. It comes with being a doctor, seeing all the... Seeing all the shit, the willfully ignorant, willfully belligerent underbelly of society. People don't trust doctors anymore. They don't trust their doctors, Kyle. Greg throws his sharpie as far as he can into the distance out of anger before bringing his face even closer to Kyle's. Greg, through gritted teeth, says, and they're all liars. Every one. Kyle submissively looks up into Greg's angry face. Beat. My family doesn't have cable. Greg's face softens. Oh. I suppose there's only so much Judge Mathis and Price is right a person can watch before being driven into madness. How do you live? Kyle says, Could be worse. I could be Annie Antivax over there. The two boys look over and see a little girl sitting alone just watching the other children play. Greg says, Tragic. The stupidity of some people. Annie notices the two staring at her and she flips them the bird. Greg does the same back. Greg, without looking away from Annie, now approaching. Hey, Kyle. Yeah? Could you go find my Sharpie? I only have the one. Kyle stands up and heads off in the direction Greg threw his Sharpie. Annie approaches the good doctor with an ugly scowl plastered across her face. How do you live with yourself? Quite nicely. Big house, lots of delicious respect, friends, and a wife who adores me. What about you, Annie? Her scowl deepens as she squints her eyes. You should be ashamed. My mommy says that you're an agent of the deep state, making people sick to keep them slow and submissive. And worst of all, you're giving children autism with, with your vaccines. You're a monster. Greg smiles, secretly thrilled by every interaction he has with her. Were you going to say something? Oh, I'm happy to see uh, autism there with two Ds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are kids. We need to have these jokes. I don't care. <laughs> Fuck the Rugrats of it all. I want them. I want these jokes. <laughs> me too i went like so many with different ways with that like i went with artism at first and went on with a joke about like why she hates art and why her mother hates art and then i was like That's too mm, deep let's let's lean into the weird part of it instead so we went with odd um greg smiles secretly thrilled by every interaction he has with her and yet you are the odd one there's a reason no one is ever over there playing with you, Annie. Your mommy is an idiot, and if you believe her conspiracy crackpot mumbo-jumbo, you might be too. Annie slaps Greg across the face. You'll get yours eventually. She stalks off angrily. All right, so that's the first point where I'm like, all right, this could be like a red herring situation, of the, or this could be like the setup to his, uh, the, the issue with, you know, with, with the cootie shots and all that. What do you mean red herring? Like Annie's get spread and shit? Yeah. Interesting. They're, they're, like it could be anything. <laughs> it's the cooties. It's it's just a potential setup for shit to happen. Unless Annie wants to start playing doctor. <clears throat> Which she might. Who knows? Knows Anyways. goes. Greg rubbing his reddening cheek. Too bad you won't be around long enough to see it. That's a that's an anti-vax child joke. Cause she'll die. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> she flips him off, still walking away. Kyle returns, sharpie in hand. What was all that about? Don't worry about it. It's just this thing we do. <laughs> Hot. Um. Okay. Let's get this shot done, shall we? Kyle lifts up his sleeve, baring his shoulder. Greg pulls the lid from the sharpie and draws the two circles and two dots. Match cut to. Uh, there's a girl. Then she pulls her sleeve back down. Yes, it's a match cut. Boom. 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 Directing from the page. We all should. <laughs> yes. As directors, we should. We should do it anyway. Fair. Fuck everyone else. Um, We're the first ones to see girl. the movie. 
Yeah, fuck those people. Fuck everything. Riders. Um, <laughs> the girl, Jeannie, pulls her sleeve back down over the Sharpie marks. Uh, so this means that I can hold hands with Henry now without getting cooties. Skank. <laughs> if you both have your cootie shots, you could even kiss. Jeannie, blushing and smiling shyly. Really? Doctor, what kind of girl do you think I am? Skank. Hum- human? <laughs> Jeannie, smiling, says, good guess, but no. And then she leaves. <laughs> wonder what that means see here's here's another like runner that i have going on because i want her to be something at the end <laughs> <laughs> just a fucking alien maybe well, what game is maybe she? she's a dog what game is she playing? i don't know <laughs> that's that that's the question that's, yeah that's that would answer it really or if it's even a game just twist it up even more make it fucking real life who knows <laughs> Windows Defender is telling me that there's a virus threat protective that could be a fuck get out of here. Oh no. <laughs> what were you saying? Right. Cut to exterior schoolyard later. Greg is sitting with his best friend Alex at a picnic table. Greg is eating out of a Ziploc bag of chickpeas and drinking. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't finish that thought, I guess. Well, He's let's drinking just take the something. period out and see if it makes sense. And drinking Alex is looking at. No, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, so he's eating chickpeas. Alex is looking at a shiny red apple. Greg says, what is a chickpea anyways? Alex, observing the stationary apple, suspiciously says, why would I know that? Greg says, I don't know. Thought I'd ask. Alex, never letting his eyes leave the apple. Well, what's it taste like? I mean, it's not bad. It's salty, but that's because there's salt on it. It's kind of like a mix between a cracker and a bean, but it's round? Hmm. I don't know. Guess they're supposed to be healthy. That's what my mom said anyways. He pops another one into his mouth. Alex squinting at the apple. That's mom's for you. Not sure what my mom gave me, though. Greg looks at the apple. Alex glances at Greg and then back at the apple. What do you mean? Motioning to the apple, Alex says, I don't know what this is. It's a Macintosh. What? What are you doing? <laughs> Alex finally looks at Greg. Greg, what is this? Greg is suspicious. Beat. Deciding he can't figure out the game, he answers. Placing a hand on Alex's shoulder. Is your mom still dropping you on your head? It's an apple. Alex, excitedly smiling and rushing through his words. This can't be an apple because an apple a day is supposed to keep the doctor away. Boom! <laughs> and he throws the apple on the ground. <laughs> Greg, smiling slightly, says, Boo. Alex, smiling, says, I was thinking of that one all day. Good job, buddy. Is that what you're doing these days? Trying your hand at stand-up? No. Well, what are you doing? Sitting here with you, just chilling? Not right now. I mean, what is your job? Oh, uh, I can't really tell you. What do you mean you can't tell me? It's kind of a secret. Well, now you gotta tell me. I can't, dude. Greg stops for a second. If I guess it right, will you tell me? I really shouldn't, but shouldn't isn't, but shouldn't is not can't. Alex hesitantly says, fine, I guess. Secret agent. Nope. Greg thinks for a minute. Damn. I really thought that was it. Wait, does it have anything to do with Jeannie? What do you mean? Earlier, after I gave Jeannie her cootie shot, she said that she wasn't human. Come to think of it, I hope that shot doesn't have a bad reaction to whatever she is. Hmm. That's weird. She said she wasn't human? What is she then? Alien, probably. But she doesn't seem evil. Maybe she's a friendly alien. So there you go. We're setting that up more. I think we're calling it out. Just then. (laughs) Do what? I think we're calling it out at this point. Yeah, but maybe we don't make her an alien. That's true. We can misdirect. Maybe we make her a panda or something. Just then. No, I'm going to take panda off the table. Okay, a koala then. She was the class hamster. <laughs> Dogs. Oh. Shut your ass. He's just trying to add to the conversation, I guess. I put them in the kennel because they were bugging me, and I thought one of them pooped in the apartment. That's dogs for you. Yeah, I'll walk him when we're done with this. All right. Just then, a girl, Kelsey, shows up carrying a bag of carrot sticks. What are you guys talking about? 
She sits down across from Greg, taking his hand in hers. Hey, honey, says Greg. Hey, babe, says Kelsey. Greg hurriedly speaking before Alex can. We were talking about Alex's secret new job. Kelsey, opening up the bag of carrot sticks and taking one out without letting go of Greg's hand. Oh, exciting. What is it, Alex? Alex hurriedly picks up the apple, dirty and cracked from the force of hitting the ground. Hey, Kelsey, what's this? She looks at the apple. Greg smiles. Ew, you're not going to eat that, are you? Alex, deadpan. What is it, Kelsey? Kelsey says, a dirty, disgusting apple. Excitedly, rushing through his words, this can't be an apple because an apple a day is supposed to keep the doctor away. Boom! He once again throws the apple at the ground as hard as he can, and it shatters. Juice and chunks of apple fly everywhere. They laugh. Alex sits down, wiping specks of apple off himself. And that's how far I got. That's pretty far. That's some pages. Yeah. Set up a few characters. Alex's secret new job is superhero, by the way. Oh, I had, uh, you don't need to tell me that. Good for the audience to know, though. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what else would it be? I was wondering how we were going to fit superhero kid in there. Some of the characters, uh, <laughs> yeah, some of the characters that I tried to introduce wound up changing a bit in mine. Um, uh, I like most of this, and I'm kind of wondering how, how old they should be sounding when they when they talk and articulate, because we got to make kitties get uh, through these. I mean... We just find some people that don't suck. That's impossible. It's also not our problem. I'm not crippling the script for the sake of terrible acting. <laughs> I think on the day, uh, people might cut the word. Well, if they can't say a word, that's not really a concern with me. I don't mind it being a clumsy word and then a kid saying it because that's funny. Yeah. Yeah, because my thoughts on it are I like the idea of them being, like, quite articulate, but then, like, there's just certain things that stand out, like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> like, just stuff that they really don't know. Yeah, like Like, autism. the whole autism yeah. thing. Yeah, I like the just kind of pick and choose where it is and just try to stay consistent, because I like the idea of Greg being very well-spoken. That's why I wrote him this way. Yeah, I thought he was going to be more housey. I mean, when he's in character, he kind of is referencing, you know, people lying and being stupid. Um, I took this kind of the spirit of it, but, you know, whenever he's just here with his friends or whatever, like, I like the idea of him breaking character every so often and then it being kind of obvious whenever he's really breaking into character. Like, back here where he's, like, over dramatically talking to Kyle and stuff. Yeah, that's clearly doing house. Yeah. I was going through my notes, and it was like, we needed to, uh, if he's going to be house house and he's going to be the voice of cynicalism, it was like, we kind of needed to find places to, characters to get levity out of, and I wound up making the cop. I was going to try to, like, work him down into, like, a Fargo-type thing or Ar Officer Bar Brady from South Park. <laughs> That's, like, the exact opposite of how I thought about him. Me too. And then I was like, it really doesn't make sense because I, I can't make the CSI kids completely fucking uselessly stupid. But the cop can be uselessly stupid because we already have a team of lawyers investigating, a team of CSI investigating, and a superhero. And why do we need a, a hard-nosed drug addict cop? Like, when we can just have... I actually wound up going with a sheriff instead of a cop. More of a okay. mosey cowboy type. But my house is very housey. <laughs> All right. I was looking for places to, to try to pull levity out, but that makes more sense. That Well, it, well, it makes some I don't know which one I, I really like now. I want to... Because we don't have any scenes that cut together yet. It's kind of hard to feel like what beats better... To have him only go into character when it when it makes sense, and then he's just a kid. Um, there's there's one note that I have written down um, that I feel like could be helpful in combining. Like I still don't know what your story is, but like um, this fucking genie character, I like the idea of the cop possibly investigating, trying to figure out what her deal is. Yeah. Just as an as an addition. Combined so far, we only have 16 pages. 
and it only partially establishes the world, so there's time for that for sure. Let me get my notebook and see what I had about that type of poop. Yeah, I was, uh... Anytime I would write down notes, it would wind up becoming completely different when I started writing, so it's not like my notebook's super fucking useful anyway. Here's some notes about me watching Letterkenny and listening to Jeff Rosenstock. It's super good. You know what? My notebook's not a very good document for anything. I'm just going to put that back. <laughs> it's mostly a place where I fucking meander. And I've got the Google scratch pad, and then I've got that shit. Um, yeah, I liked it. Uh, there's some chuffa here. We got the 10 pages pretty quick. Chuffa? There's some chuffa. I don't know what that means. Something that a uh, bald guy used to say to Kevin Smith on set. Fucking David. No. Okay. Not a David. All right. John McClane. Oh. Bruce Willis. There we go. I was thinking of David Klein, I think his name is. I also struggled that I had no place where it felt appropriate to put uh, the wife character in, which is this Alex. No, not the, which is Kelsey. Alex is the superhero. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I figured intro introducing them. Um, introducing them early on as their dynamic as just kind of normal ass people um, is useful but I do want to establish that she's only with him because he's a doctor yeah I wasn't <laughs> sure how to make that clear that it's a that she's a piece of the status yeah um, I think that'll become clear once we take away his status and she goes with it yeah that'll be a big scene probably should have some rain for that <laughs> Of course. Anything else you want to say about uh, about your end of it or where you're planning to go with it? What you're thinking um, about? I mean, at this point, I, I still feel like this is still the section that I want to work on a little more before we start picking other sections. Yeah, this first chunk um, is still kind of a puzzle for me. Yeah, I know. And that's that's rough because you took the second part and you don't know what you're springboarding off of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like this conversation... Is helpful though. I think cause and effect works both ways, so I'm not just gonna change my shit because your shit's different. I'm gonna meet in the middle somewhere, bitch ass. Well, yeah, that's that's the bitch point. Bitch ass, sucking ass, motherfucking ass. All right, well, fuck you. If I can, if I you can. Um. But yeah, I I feel like I uh I still want to establish a few more characters, um, and set up the world a little more. Like I want to add a little more to it. To what I already have um, before moving on to the next section, essentially. Yeah, one thing that's getting really intense about uh, knowing, reading your script and knowing what's in my script is that so much of this is happening at that doctor stand. But there's not many places else to take the script. Well, my part, um, I just showed a couple characters getting shots. And uh, Annie Antivax not getting a shot at the stand. And then beyond that, they're at like a picnic table somewhere in the playground. Yeah. So, I mean, it all basically is going <clears> to, <throat> it all basically at this point takes place on a playground. Hmm. Um, I probably crippled because my point of reference is the Highland Park Elementary School playground where there are different areas, but like, once they made the upgrade, everything kind of got centralized to one sandbox, and I keep thinking about the kiosk being right outside that sandbox. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not thinking of reality in any way, shape, or form. Time means nothing, and uh, as far as the playground goes, it could literally be anything in this playground. 
Yeah, and that's how it should be. Uh, yeah, I definitely don't want to get any posi like geographical markers other than like here's a swing, here's a kiosk. But we'll figure we if we were yeah. making the movie, we would figure it out once we got to a playground where we wanted to put the kiosk. But I kind of like yeah, it being we would near just traffic. Change what needed to change. I kind of like it being near uh, foot traffic with children and whatnot. Yeah. Extras in the background. Yeah. I think that's all I have to say about that. All right. You ready to read? No, I'm super not. What if they don't like me? What if they don't well, like my Too bad. You're, I'm not going to kick you off the podcast, Jeff. You're still more important than any of the people listening. Don't, oh God. Don't get me canceled, you bastard. You're canceled. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> All right. You got mine up? Yep. All right. Exterior, hospital stand day. Kids recess about the... I used recess as a verb. Recess about the playground equipment. <laughs> wow, well, adults. Oh, I told, you remember the email that I said I didn't proofread? We'll correct as we go. Yep. Yep, kids recess about the playground equipment while adults in rubber latex gloves try to keep them from touching each other. We never see the adult faces. Pass the sandbox. Oh, shit. Adults are already here? Well, yeah, they're wrangling these children. I'm really not a... Uh, Madness. We cut that part for sure. Uh, I wasn't sure about that. I and mean, we, we should discuss the... We've had some discussions about the adults and their place in the world and how they should be treating children or if we should see them at all. And I like the way yours felt. And I guess mine doesn't really break that style much. It's just like we got these one shots of the adults and they kind of go away immediately. We don't see their faces, so all we right. don't know they're wearing masks. Well, do do we want adults to show up? Because like originally, whenever we talked about it, we talked about just having the adults be a thing at the end really well after we've we had a i mean i guess we never i don't know we notated had a couple. it we've gone through a lot of versions of this at this point yeah that's but true I've, we gotta go back and listen to all like five hours of not it. doing it um but <laughs> i'm eventually going to i'm gonna like put this all into like one or two like podcasts and cut out all the extra bullshit that'd be nice to hear yeah yeah i've definitely we we had we've made at least some comments or jokes about the like it being corona vaguely or parents yeah. uh the adults in the school trying to keep people apart maybe wearing gloves or masks but i'm cool to keep it or kill it it doesn't really it's not special to me all right all right so past the sandbox doc stands behind the scrap wood kiosk a construction paper red cross glued to the front uh mm -hmm. doc is cleaning all the utensils in his crayon box with a clorox wipe as jingling spurs get closer and a shadow looms over him. <laughs> <laughs> jingling spurs. Yeah, it's got to be caps because of sound effect. Doc, without looking right. up, Sheriff, here for some tinctures? You pass the apothecary, or are you cracking down on tans? I didn't have a good joke there, so, but we got into the scene. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff. <laughs> we're, we're in like a, a fucking uh, time period now. Yeah. This is crazy. Well, the doc... Also, I think but the kid's smart enough to know that it's kind of silly. The other guy's playing a sheriff <laughs> wearing spurs. Yeah, I, I like it. It's, it's really not what I expected at all, but I like the idea of the fucking like, old school sheriff. Yeah. That's funny. It's funnier than the uh, drug addict crazy cop I was, that I was picturing. <laughs> yeah, which that's what I was picturing as well. I think we talked in depth about that, but the sheriff is way better. Yeah. It's way more uh, whimsical and childlike. So, Sheriff, a kid in chaps and a plaid shirt, tips his cowboy hat to Doc. Howdy, Doc. Just stop by for a checkup. Maybe ask a few questions about the goings-on around here. And what's going on here, Sheriff? Tell me. Sheriff moseys over to the patient's stool, sits down, and slaps his hat on his leg. Well, Doc, you have to notice kids disappear between periods today. Some of them plucked right out of recess. Doc puts his yellow plastic stethoscope limps over to Sheriff and listens intently to different parts of Sheriff's arm. Because he doesn't know how to use a stethoscope. He is a child. Doc, <laughs> you're telling me a bunch of, You're telling me a bunch of... Wow. What is this typo? You are telling a me... A bunch over booger eaters. Well, that's supposed to just be of. Uh, all right. 
You're telling me a bunch of booger eaters got the belly aches and the belly aches. Belly aches. <laughs> Dude, the typos are real. I wrote this just before <laughs> I came over here. Anyway, <laughs> booger eaters got the belly aches and called their mommies. Sounds like an epidemic to me. I need to check your tonsils. Sheriff holds his hat to his chest and leans back with his mouth open. The doc puts the stethoscope in his mouth. <laughs> doc, uh, interesting. Sheriff, mouthful. What? <laughs> doc, set the stethoscope on the kiosk and leans against it. Mumbles, son of a gum. Sheriff, what? Doc watches over the playground. Children screaming, picking their nose, picking their scabs, and licking playground equipment. Doc. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Just from the perspective that we're at, <laughs> like this is how I see children, but I feel like the perspective, I don't feel like the perspective is right on that. <laughs> but... Well, Doc's seeing these disease-ridden idiots that keep causing their own problems. <laughs> All right, I, I get you. I mean, we could we could talk about it. That's funny. Licking playground equipment. <laughs> they would. <laughs> The children, Zach. This makes me think of like some Invader Zim shit. <laughs> like when he looks around the playground and they're just doing the dumbest shit. That's funny. <laughs> I fucking love Invader Zim. That's a good way to think about it. Yeah. yeah that's exactly. I'm thinking of that art style even. <laughs> like the kids just licking monkey bars. That's so interesting because when I was thinking about some of these moments in the script, I kept picturing that weird hella low angle where you could see the earth curve. And it's just, yeah. yeah. So Invader Zim wasn't out of my mind. It was somewhere in the subconscious. That's funny. All right. So <laughs> Doc is watching the children be heathens off in the distance, and he says, you can lead a horse to water, and they'll just poop in the lake and drink doo-doo juice. Sheriff slowly puts his hat on and studies Doc. Will I be okay, Doc? Doc flips open the crayon box and shuffles through you, through his utensils. Today, have you ever heard of Kudia Kaka? That was my rough attempt to make a strep a strep a strep a strep a cuck. You'd ask that, the, the strep log name. Yeah. yeah. Strepococcus or whatever. Yeah, if I had read it out loud, I would realize that I can't say it out loud or land that joke. Anyway, Sheriff, I've heard of Kaka, but I'm not from one of your fancy doctor schools. Am I in a bad way, Doc? Doc uh, pulls, shuffles. Nope, let's just delete the word pulls. Doc shuffles to Sheriff with a black Sharpie. You're just peachy. I'm going to give you something as a preventative. This is a cootie shot. Sheriff's eyes dun, shrink dun, dun. in terror. Doc, do we have a cootie problem? The only problem we have is ignorant nose pickers coughing on each other. I could save this playground, Sheriff, and I don't need a gun to do it. Doc uncaps his all sharpie. Right. Yep. Um, so, so that's all right. I'm just looking at uh, the differences that we have here. That's that's kind of interesting. Is that it seems like uh, for the cootie thing, you're looking at it as more of a like. Uh, this is a this is a rare thing, and I'm looking at it as it's cootie season. Like, come get your cootie shots. <laughs> yeah, I just think that's interesting. Well, that's one line about it. I figure it's like Doc is always giving out cootie shots because it's cootie season. But now there's they're starting to see cooties around possibly, and there's an inkling, and he's about to get investigated because we have to get yeah. to that point somewhere. All right. <laughs> Doc uncaps his sharpie and leans on his cane. <laughs> that should be cane. With his right hand and shakily <laughs> holds the sharpie out in his left hand. I totally forgot that was a thing we talked about. Was He's the supposed cane. to be Dr. House, you shithead. Anyway. All right, I'll add the cane. <laughs> Doc says, roll up your sleeve. Sheriff says, aren't you right-handed? It's the one I'm walking with, isn't it? Sheriff rolls up his sleeve. Doc leans in real close and slowly puts the marker on Sheriff's arm. He moves the marker with his whole arm and makes one rough oval that doesn't connect at the top. Doc takes a deep breath and pull away. Sheriff, Doc, are you okay? Doc says, is your face? <laughs> Doc leans in for the second circle, a much much less of an oval but jagged circle, which I didn't even finish that sentence. I must have got distracted. Sheriff says, now be still or this will hurt a lot. Doc is supposed to say that. Well, I was asleep at the fucking wheel. Uh, Doc points <laughs> Doc points the marker like a dart and lines it up with his eye. He slowly pushes the marker into the arm and makes a mark just at the edge of the first circle. 
the next dot just outside the second circle. Doc says, stay still, because he's blaming the sheriff for missing the, first, the second dot. Doc tries again yeah. to get a dot near the center of the second circle. He caps the marker and tosses it into the crown box. Sheriff asks, did I, did I get a sucker? Doc sighs, you can have a mint. Sheriff looks disappointed. Oh, okay. They're soft ones. <laughs> Doc takes a butterscotch from his pocket and pops it in his mouth. Oh, why do you get a butterscotch? Because I did a great job today. Now, <laughs> now get out of my clinic. There's a line. Doc turns around and the CSI team is at the counter. Ooh, my, my earbuds are about to die. CSI team is four kids in a diamond pattern. The one in the back is playing David Caruso from CSI Miami. We'll call him Sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> sunglasses takes off his sunglasses. Long line? Then who is he? Sunglasses. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I got you. His teammates groan in unison and turn around. Lead CSI. Can you stop? CSI girl. Take this serious, newbie. CSI boy. These department transfers think they're all hot shots. I'm sick of it. Sunglasses lips quiver. <laughs> but... Lead CSI. Butts are for coconuts. Sun- sunglasses puts his shades. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I don't know, but we've been making exactly that type of joke all day. <laughs> I love it. Sunglasses puts his shades back on to hide his watery eyes and looks at the ground. The real team turned back to Doc. Lead CSI. Some kids have been coming down with cooties. Doc, have they? I haven't diagnosed any cases. Lead CSI, what a coincidence. You're making mints on cootie shots and not a single case. Doc, yeah, they have their cootie shots, so there's no cooties. You talk to anti-vax, Annie? CSI boy, why did she talk Why did she talk about me? CSI girl, <laughs> hush. Because, you know, kids and crushes. Lead CSI, yeah. we're going to need to inspect your clinic. Take some samples for the lab. Doc, you came here to question my practice? Lead CSI. Just doing our job, Doc. Doc, of course. For justice. For truth. People need to trust their doctor. All of you trust each other, right? Team looks amongst themselves. Doc, maybe one of you has my cootie shot. Lead CSI discreetly rubs her arm. Doc, but that's doctor-patient confidentiality. I'm sure you trust each other enough to tell your team when you're sick. What can I help you with? Lead CSI, we need to see your vaccine. Doc, fine. Doc pulls his marker out of the crayon box. Doc, come get it. Lead CSI puts her play school toolbox on the ground and fishes out blue pliers and tosses them to Sunglasses. Sunglasses fumbles to catch the pliers. Lead CSI, newbie bag the sample and put your gloves on. Show up to work for once. He walks... Oh, that's your catchphrase. <laughs> that's catchphrase for you. <laughs> <laughs> he walks up to Doc and sets them on the counter. He takes some mittens out of, out of his satchel and clumsily picks up the pliers again. The team... All with finger gloves, scoff and roll their eyes. There's a real classism issue here now. Doc studies sunglasses, <laughs> embarrassed for him, and holds out the marker. Sunglasses delicately with both hands on the pliers grips the marker. He squeezes and the pliers slip off the marker. Doc is still holding it. I just love the idea of the dude with the mittens. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. He doesn't have real gloves. He's a child. <laughs> He's improvising his costume. Anyway, he's, gra- he's grabbing the marker with the pliers and it slips off. Doc, darn, you almost had it. Doc drops the marker and limps away to sit in the stool. Doc, if we're done here <laughs> with the accusations, can we get the disco shoes out of my clinic? Sunglasses keeps his head down as he shuffles out of the kiosk with the sample. Light up sketchers on display. Lead CSI and, and girl CSI face palm. CSI boy. They all think they're hot shots. Awesome. You're trashing him for his light up sketchers, which feels mean and inappropriate. <laughs> uh, man, we're so good at writing. I love all like the super specific shit that we dropped in our <laughs> in our parts. Specificity is the is the heart of comedy. I'm like chickpeas and you're like light up sketchers. <laughs> <laughs> and they're roasting him for it, like that doesn't make uh, you the dopest kid. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I don't know. If I got some light up shoes, I wonder how people would feel about them at work. Well, they wouldn't call you disco shoes, but they'd be they'd be side eyeing you. And then some people would be like, "I remember those. Zach is the coolest." <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I do kind of like wander, like 
As far as I go at this place of my employment, I am the one that's dressed very weird. You peacocking? Not really, but just like, you know, I like a lot of stuff that is, uh, I, some people would consider juvenile, I guess. <laughs> Superheroes and sleep pants. I can't do sleep pants. I will be sent home. <laughs> well, I can do anything I want because I work from home. Oh, that's fair. But yeah, you know, superheroes or like Zelda or Pokemon or some shit like that. You know, yeah. stuff of that nature while everybody else is like, I'm wearing a button up. Good for you. We don't have to anymore. The rules changed a year ago. <laughs> you work with a lot of old people. That's true. We were business casual at my call center, and then, like, as part of a new initiative, they, they were just like, no, you can wear what any, whatever you want. We're, we're Gen X or whatever. Nice. Yeah, our thing was, like, uh, yeah, I work for the state and everything, so they were like, you have to wear fucking button-up shirts and stuff, and you can't wear jeans. But, like, the floor that I work on is very close to, like, a warehouse situation where you know we get really dirty and shit so you know they changed the rules for us so we can wear jeans and so on still can't wear shorts still can't wear sleeveless shirts even though the air conditioner's broken for at least two weeks that's stupid (laughs) yeah but the women can wear (laughs) sleeveless shirts Well, yeah you want some side boob in there and skirts not where i work you don't want the side boob where I work. You don't know me like that, son. Maybe I do. All right, that's true. I mean, if you like, you know, very large 60-year-old women with a lot of missing teeth, don't. it's all you, man. Shh, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> all right. But, yeah, um, I think I do. I actually think that this could blend together pretty well. Yeah, now that I was reading it, other than the horrendous typos... Uh, yeah, it wasn't... Yeah, that's pretty bad. You know, you should just hang up your p- pencil, I guess. We all know I can't proofread, and we all know that I didn't proofread for this one. Uh, whenever I saw... There was a word in here that I saw that you spelled right, and I was like, oh, hell yeah, stethoscope. I googled <laughs> it. I remember. <laughs> I... Uh, yeah, You'll be happy to I know that I was... A couple podcasts ago, you, you spelled it really weird. I don't even remember what it was, You'll... but... Well, I had to Google it because I kept trying to shove an F sound in there instead of the TH sound, which is what I did on okay. the last podcast. Gotcha. But yeah, I, I think that this could actually fit really well together. Um, I really, I fucking love the sheriff thing. <laughs> I'm so glad I went with sheriff instead of cop. Officer Barbrady would have been a good choice, but I, I'm liking the sheriff. Yeah, I like the sheriff because it, it just it is so very different. And the way that I was thinking about this, I realized that even though I was going weird with like this little girl might be an alien, I wasn't going weird enough in a genre perspective <laughs> where you're like, and this part's a western. Yeah, because they're not just playing. I really well, like they're playing different games, but that also means that some people are in different genres in their head. Like their narrative is in a different story. Yeah, I I really like that. Um, so that I think is great. I really like that he keeps his uh, equipment in like a, a pencil box situation, like a crayon box. Yeah. That's that. Uh, he has shelves on the cool. kiosk, but I was just like, I really wanted him to walk around the office and look at stuff. And I was like, where the fuck? He's only got one sh- one marker for cooties. I don't know what the other stuff in the crayon box really is, but it's definitely something. I mean, it could literally it could. I don't know. What do kids want to carry around with them? Fucking Candy, little toys and things. Stickers? Like, <laughs> sure. Band-Aids. He wants stickers. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's a doctor. Got to have band aids. That could just be if he's um, just treating somebody sticks. with depression. He could just a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That'd be yeah, and I and I like the the CSI characters as well. I liked it. <laughs> The, the mittens thing just like that's hilarious to me and everybody's just like rolling their eyes and just like oh, fucking hate this guy this fucking guy that's a, that's one we deliberately discussed why is he here the, just like the david caruso one's supposed to be the loser and then the lead csi like has to go home for cooties and then he's de facto the third member and they have to learn to love him or he's got to learn to get respect 
Yeah. I really like that the because I I really expected kids playing CSI. They're all gonna have the sunglasses situation, but I like that the one that's like doing that shit is still he's just the outcast and these other ones are like no we take our jobs serious. yeah we're making a statement there is grisham's csi the original csi and then there's what the fuck was david yep. caruso the doing matter or whatever <laughs> yeah the miami it's yeah. miami versus original and we the original yeah. should roll its eyes at miami i mean yeah miami was the first one i ever saw because my dad watched it um, and then I ended up watching the first four seasons of the original CSI at my friend's house once. Grisham's a good character. Yeah. I like the original. Um, I don't think I would ever go back and rewatch Fuck it because no. who has the fucking time? I don't even think that um, type of TV holds up anymore. Probably not. I think the last person that really watched it died in September. <laughs> that was my grandma. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, are you referencing a real person? <laughs> yes. I think she was the last person that watched all these shows. I was about to say Little Richard. <laughs> <laughs> no, Fred Willard. <laughs> <laughs> so much death. Yeah. Fuck. Fuck your chair. Fuck your chair, fucking chair. That's what I said. A... My chair is broken, so I just threw it on the ground. It's not a part of your system. I was going to say that. I know. I beat you to it. My dad's not a phone. <laughs> Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> so the script. The script. No, I think I think you're right. They blend together better than I thought they did once I started reading it. It's just uh, he's in he's in the house character the whole time that he's – uh, inside of the scenes I have. And I, I'm definitely going to switch yeah. up calling him Doc to calling him Greg, probably. Well, All I right. like when the cowboy calls him Doc. Oh, yeah. I dig that as well. I think that's that's the, the cowboy character. That's the sheriff's character. <laughs> he became a cowboy really rapidly just this morning. Like, there was a sheriff... And I was thinking of Office Officer Bar Brady, but I couldn't think of how Officer Bar Brady talks intelligently in any way. And then he just like because he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bar Brady is more of a reactive person, and I needed this person to have agency. And, it's, and then the cowboy thing just kind of fit. And then you brought up the uh, he's in his own genre thing, and that's that's a really good observation. I like that idea. Yeah. This is. Uh, I think this is this is gonna be a cool thing. Like I just feel like. There's, there's set up for a lot of, like, I set up a lot of weird shit, and then you have expanded, like, this sheriff character is, like, the complete opposite of what I thought, and I can't wait to see where it goes. I want to stick him in more places and see what he does with the other characters. Yeah. Because how does a, how does a cowboy-ass sheriff, like, obviously someone's going to have to be suspicious of the superhero eventually, and then how does cowboy sheriff <laughs> approach even caring? I'd say that's that's why I think it's uh, really weird and also really interesting, is because I was expecting a cop that is very like driven and very like just super fucking serious. Yeah. But the fact that this guy is just not is like all right. So who is the real foil <laughs> to? everything else that's happening who is our antagonist yeah sheriff did not wind up becoming doc's foil and and anyway, he come yeah he he has levity uh i know lawyer kids yeah. maybe uh maybe kelsey in some well not not direct or anti-vax annie uh yeah anti-vax annie i think is a really good uh foil because you know it's the opposite of a doctor it's the enemy of a doctor um and the fact i i really like I added in there that I want them both to really enjoy it. Like they're really playing the role. They're really playing, but I want them both to take it deadly fucking serious. Yeah. They, they make, they actually make really good foils and her just being an anti-vaxxer and, and spreading that amongst the children. So maybe she could be like the mastermind sending the sheriff off to like, 
really investigate into this kind of situation. Yeah. Um, because the sheriff at the point that he's at, he feels like, you know, like Officer Barb Brady in the way that it is, uh, he's reactive. Yeah, I could not. He doesn't seem to be. I could not give him a way into looking for clues or really talking tough questions. And then he leaves, wants the CSI kids show up, which that's because I wrote the CSI scene in my notebook first. And then I was just trying to slap it onto the end before the podcast started. Well, I think it's really funny, and I really like that the sheriff is just kind of, like, walked on. Because, like, in this thing with with Greg and the sheriff, it's just straight up, like, Greg is just walking all over this fucking Oh, guy. yeah, yes. <laughs> It's like, bitch, you ain't no threat. Come on. But, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of angles, because... You know, talking about the lawyer kids, um, like how I pictured them was that they, um, like they're good at what they do, but their main like focus is that they're fighting each other more than the fact that they're trying to like win a case or anything. They're just more trying to get back at each other and prove who's the other person by any means necessary. Yes, that's how I see them as well. They are competing against each other and not really trying to solve the mystery yeah. of the anti-vax or get a conviction, really. Yeah, so I always kind of thought of them as being kind of... Uh, <laughs> like, they're important to the story, but they are also they also have their own shit going on. This is kind of secondary for them. Yeah, and we don't have lawyer kids fight till scene eight, but I was kind of... In my early notes, I was trying to get the, the, the lawyer kids into the scenes that I had written and and just yeah. not, not make them do anything, but just go ahead and establish their whole, like, we are the best lawyers and that stuff. We're both such great lawyers. And then try to work in the conflict of, like, well, I'm the best lawyer. And then let that seed rest for a little bit. Well, is that – do you want to do that? Well, do you want to like just kind of write a scene with those two, just trying to figure out their stuff? We gotta put it somewhere. I'd hate to, I'd I'd hate for if this thing literally had um, twelve scenes and then scene eight we just kind of introduced the lawyer kids. Well, tw- scene twelve is well, penis, yeah. so that's so there's eleven scenes. I mean, <laughs> you know, from from the <laughs> it's true. Uh, from from the point that i'm at i'm still i'm just trying to establish characters i'm still just trying to establish the world as what it is yeah um, i don't think this scene list is gonna is, is useful to us anymore i think i think at this point we could start playing with the world i mean it i don't think it could still be useful it's just we're not quite there yet sure sure because you know from from my perspective of this is a little more like free form, I guess. It's kind of just more like, let's make this world interesting and never have a character that isn't interesting. Yeah. I don't want to have like, oh, and that's kid three or whatever just over there. Like, that's why I like how you did the CSI kids, like, because they do seem to have like a personality. I mean, with four of them, I guess two of them seem a little uh, inter you know like switchable i guess yeah boy and girl but, they're switchable i'm not i don't know how to make them well we ain't got deep into it but the last time before but for like the lead person and then the sunglasses person like they're very specific i, re- I really like that yeah you were very clear last time when we were talking about who gets the cootie shots and who sits in the chair that you did not want a single character that we did not have a name for and i i wanted yeah. uh like a three piece CSI team is a three piece CSI team, and there's CSI one or two didn't make sense. I was like, boy or girl kind of makes sense, and then I just I gave boy the recurring line. They all think they're hot shots, and then the girl just kind of doing different stuff. Yeah, they're not distinct, distinct yet, but with more time to play or more description yeah, or definitely. something, that scene didn't merit them being part of the ratatat. Which uh, if we had more CSI... I guess we. I should look into writing another CSI scene where we can get them 
a little bit more clearly established. Because sure. really, the, the ex- pages ex- I wrote could fucking go anywhere in the script. I mean, yeah, I feel like that's kind of a point a little bit after, like, the catalyst of the situation. Um, I feel like that's where the story really takes off. Well, at the point... Because it's kind of... It feels to me like this is kind of, like, almost like a TV show, in a way. Like, there's a lot of characters that we can play with. um, And they could go through many, many adventures, and this is just kind of one of them. Um, And I like the idea of them all having their own shit going on. Like, they don't necessarily all need a full arc. Yeah. Because if we spend too much time building up... All having something interesting going on. We spend... And that every character... Sorry. Because we spend too much time building 20 fucking characters, it gets really hard to make one movie. Yeah, I get that. I mean, we don't need that many characters. But, uh... I just, I just want the, the opportunity for, like, every character to potentially be someone's favorite character. That's what I like about Letterkenny so much. It's so hard to pick a favorite character, and they're everyone's doing something completely different. It's really funny. I would agree with you, but I have not seen it. And that was your choice. <laughs> it was. I fucking love Gail. She's so good. Gail's the goat. Gail. Um, I like those concepts, for sure. And I definitely feel like what I'd like to do next for uh, the writings I would bring up to the next podcast would just be kind of more like uh, exploratory scenes and some some shit and i don't know if we want to assign some or if we just want to uh go free write in the next podcast bring back some samples and discuss it maybe we both write the same scene and we fight it out um by hmm. accident that's a good question i don't want us picking the same scene on purpose um all right well, do you want to write this stuff with the lawyer kids? Do you want to just write a scene? I'm kind of interested with that. And I'm also kind of interested okay. with, uh, well, I don't really care if I do it, but I want to see more CSI kids. And I would kind of like to know the CSI kids before they approach the doctor with this. Yeah. I mean, that's that sounds good to me. Because, like, where I'm at, like, obviously what I was doing was setting up some characters. Um. And not really pushing the story forward necessarily, just dropping some lines that could be interesting for later. Um, but I'm interested in just kind of shitting out some more characters and scenarios in that section for me. And if you want to take the lawyers and the CSI and then whatever the fuck you can come up with... Um, like, that would be cool. I just won't touch those characters. I'll touch everybody but myself. Touch yourself, Jeff. Okay, I'll touch myself. I knew it. Everyone did. It's yep. one of the things that I do. And I do it well. I'm right. very tender. I don't know if I do it well. Well, I'm not competing. I don't know. God, I would hate to find out someone's doing it better than me. Like, I get the job done, but I'm also very focused on trying to make it last. I'm not trying to get promoted, dude. I'm just clocking in. I want to be the CEO. The <laughs> CEO of fucking yourself. The CEO of cum. All right, well. That's the name of this podcast. You're going to need a lot of capital, so I'll send you some cum. Anyways, uh, yeah. So you good with doing that stuff, and then I'll be doing this stuff, and then we'll meet up. Yeah, yeah, I'm good with doing that. I'll get some, get some lawyer kitty shit, and some uh, maybe see some more CSI kitty shit, and yeah, I'll focus on those two, uh, those two groups, and maybe write some rando scenarios. That actually sounds like I'm about to do Dope. a lot of work in the next two weeks, and if we, 
we know I'm not going to work as hard as I can. So I'll try, just try to focus on those two things. Yeah. And I'll just kind of do what I've been doing. And then when we meet again, we'll figure out what we want to do and how shit's going to blend together. Because uh, you're... What that? You mentioned writing the same scene and then coming together and see what happens or whatever. I don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I want to do this at the end. Let's just get a bunch of shit and we'll get more ideas. If we're just going to do... Oh, you're talking about like the final yeah. document? How that's going to work out? The Yeah, the, the final document. Um, if we're just going to go like chunk by chunk and just stack them on top of each other or if we have like someone do a full pass and then someone else do like a full pass over that. Mm. E well, we're doing chunk a chunk of right now, so probably, well, there's no way, no, what, because it wouldn't be, no, by the end of, by the end of the, the last, the, by the time we're writing this, writing this, we're still going to be discussing it on the podcast, we'll probably have to do chunk a chunk of there too. No way anyone's going to sit down and write 120 pages and us wait on that. I would. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm interested to see how this all blends. Like, I feel like the chunk of chunk of method could work. Uh, but at the same time, I am kind of interested to see what it looks like once we piece it together. If, like, I was to do a full draft of it and then give it to you and then you did a full draft of it. But we'll both do full and we just kind of at the like, same time. Well, no, I'm talking about, like, if I take the chunk of chunk of and then make, like, the tiny changes or whatever, clean it up, and then I give it to you, and then you go through it all, and you take out, you do little changes and shit as well, like, what, how it would turn out, like, if it would turn out, like, cleaner or whatever. Maybe. But I don't know. That's just a thought. We might just go chunk of chunk of. That's probably easier chunk, chunk, and chunk, uh, chunk, less, chunk, chunk. Uh, less possible to, like, get each other's feelings hurt, I guess. I'm not going to get my feelings hurt. You're a bitch. Hey, quit You're barking, dog. I've just worked with a lot of people with ego problems, Jeff. <laughs> you know this. Yeah. Sometimes I'm sensitive. Sometimes I'm rude. Yeah. Just don't need any of that in my life right now, Jeff. Everything's so fucked. Oh, is there a pandemic? You know what's hilarious? What? I mentioned this taking four hours, and I literally expected two, two and a half, and guess what? It's been four hours. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. I knew it would take four hours. Oof. All right. Man, I thought I was just being facetious. You're a feces. What am I missing here? Are you saying that there's an actual food? Called a Macintosh apple? Yeah, it's the Macintosh apple. Huh. I was so close to playing the outro right there. You have no idea. I turned it on. I turned it on. I didn't know that was a thing. I've looked at many brands of apples, never seen a Macintosh apple, except in that movie, Blank Check, where that kid has that Macintosh apple. Wait, are you talking about the computer? Yes. Wait, okay, so, okay, all right. So Macintosh... Wait, that's what what? The Mac that's, what... <laughs> that's what Mac is short for. Right, so the Apple company makes the Macintosh computer. Yeah. And then there's the Macintosh Apple, which is an Apple. Yeah, that's that's what I'm realizing. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, yeah, it's spelled differently. But it's not pronounced differently. I think they call those uh, homophones. Guess what my, uh, my router's named? Um, or my network name. The big squeeze. Close. Big dick problems. Okay. It seems like a big fat lie, but... It is. It's better than my oh. neighbor's fucking Wi-Fi name, EF6472. Yeah, that's pretty boring. That That's a lot like mine, though. What's yours? Uh, a bunch of random numbers and shit. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, I wanted to give mine Three, a name eight. because everybody else in my apartment. Normally, I wouldn't change the name of anything because I don't give a shit. But no, neither does anybody in my Wi-Fi range. So it was really fucking hard to find my Wi-Fi while I was setting it up. Yeah, I get that. I would change mine, but I just don't give a shit. doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm the only person getting onto it. There's no joke here. I don't talk to my neighbors. I'd like to think somebody's walking by once in a while looking for routers, and they're like, <laughs> big dick problems. And I hope that those people get hacked. Oh, fuck, dude. Those people, <laughs> those people were rooting for me. Do what? Those people liked my joke. They're rooting for me. They're allies. Allies of me means they're friends of the pod. They might check us out on YouTube one day. You don't know. Oh, no. They might hear this and be like, dude, Zach is getting us canceled again. <laughs> again? Dude, you're a chronic canceler. You keep getting us fucking canceled. <laughs> what software did you use? Um, I used... Uh, I found a website called writerduet.com, and it's pretty fucking great. Uh, because Adobe Story got canceled. It's gone. They got rid of it. That's what Can't Adobe likes to all. do, is just delete products people were using. <clears throat> yeah, I hate that. I tried to find it again because it was free, and it was really good. And I had problems with uh, cell text or whatever it is you use. If you're going to export to PDF, you can't just save or hit print. you got to hit typeset PDF. Yeah, there was, there was too too much going on with that one where it was like, haha, you got to buy it now. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to do the with bullshit. With Celtex? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I have the Celtex that was available in 2010 where you had to download the desktop app and you could have some web features if you were properly registered. Um, and I took a copy of that and made copies of it, put it on thumb drives. So my software is 10 years old and is completely on the desktop. Okay. Yeah. Well, if ever you're looking to switch off of that, even though I don't know why you would, writerduet.com, pretty great. Check it out. <clears throat> John August has, uh, has his own screenwriting software called Highland. Yeah, I think he mentioned that in the one that I listened to. Yeah, I'm not going to pay 40 bucks for it. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it probably costs a nice amount of money there. 40 bucks is less than I expected. I think, but free is better. I think 40 bucks was the last price I saw. It might be more than that. <laughs>